Ngayon tayo po tayong lahat and let's open our Bibles in the book of Nehemiah chapter 3. Okay, let's read just verse number uh, 1 to 5. KJV. Okay, so uh, let's read this all together. Verses number 1 to 5, Nehemiah chapter 3. Ready? Begin. Then Eliashib the high priest rose up with his brethren the priests, and they built the sheep gate, they sanctified it, and set up the doors of it. Even unto the tower of Mea, they sanctified it unto the tower of Hananiel. And next to him builded the men of Jericho, and next to them builded Zachar, the son of Imri. But the fish gate did the sons of Hasanah build, who also laid the beams thereof, and set up the doors thereof, and locks thereof, and the bars thereof. And next unto them repaired Merimoth, the son of Urijah, the son of Koz. And next unto them repaired Meshulam, the son of Berechiah, the son of Meshezabil. And next to them repaired Zadok, son of Bana. And next unto them the Tegoites repaired, but their nobles put not their necks to the work of the Lord. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, uh, we, uh, we pray for your guidance and uh, wisdom, dear Lord, as we study Nehemiah chapter 3. In order that uh, the chapter is uh, uh, list, dear Lord, of people who did work for you at the wall, dear Lord. I pray, Lord, that you help us, Lord, see the wisdom in why you allow this chapter to be uh, written here. And though most of, uh, though a lot of people might uh, look over it, uh, but I pray, Lord, that uh, you help us learn principles and what you want us to see in this chapter. I pray, Lord, that you help us uh, as we study. Give me wisdom as I uh, teach, uh, teach, dear Lord. May be the one to be glorified in what we're going to do. Uh, and especially the things that we're going to do today in our worship service. For all these things, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. <coughs> now I have considered skipping the chapter in, uh, in preaching and just go straight to, number, to chapter 4 because if, you're go, if you have read the book of Nehemiah, this whole chapter are names of people who worked at the, temp, at the temple, who worked at building the wall, and also uh, where they are stationed to work. Okay, and although uh, I just want us to look at a couple of principles here, why God allowed this to be written and to be given to us today. So uh, we'll, we'll just be dealing with the whole chapter. We'll not go verse by verse because these are uh, names. Now, I, have, I was thinking uh, what to preach of in this uh, chapter. And re really, if, if you want to preach from this chapter, then have to do a lot of research because um, really not a lot of principles there but the meanings of the names here even the meanings of the gates has a lot of things to teach us although that's not what I'm going to talk about uh, today because uh, we have the sheep gate the water gate and all of these things now all of these things has significance okay these gates around Jer uh, uh, Jerusalem were built for a purpose for example the sheep gate uh, pertains to the Lord uh, uh, Jesus Christ where nobody can enter without first coming to the Lord right before you you enter the Christian life first of, you have to be saved there's the fish gate which is near the fish market we have the water gate as well we have the dung gate where all the garbage or and, and, and all of this waste goes through there to be thrown away all these things has a spiritual um, uh, Call this application in our lives and even to them it has a lot of meaning for for the people in jerusalem that's why they named those gates and why and, and uh, the people who are working on those gates but what i want to focus on about uh here and hopefully uh we're just 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 it's not going to be a long message what i want to focus on here are the people that god mentioned not all of the people, um, all of the names of these people have meanings and we can apply that. But we'll just go on the surface and look at principles. Now the first thing I want to say here is that the first thing that I saw is people are important to God. 
people are important to God. And though while, while we listen to preaching and read the Bible and all these things, we know the Davids, we know the Solomons, we know the Paul, the Peter, these people who did a lot of great things for God, very famous in the Christian world. But God allowed these people to be written here and to be appreciated. The reason why is that God knows that they worked for the Lord, they did their best work for the Lord, and they were acknowledged, okay? That's why God, even though they were only mentioned once, maybe some of them are one, mentioned once only, and the work that they did, but God allowed that to happen because God appreciated work that is done for Him. Okay, now, now, not, uh, you, now again, what, what I see here is the measure of what we do for God is not the magnitude of that, but the faithfulness in how we did it. Okay? Not only the pastors, not only the preachers, not only the mega church pastors are the ones to be appreciated and to be looked up to, but those people who worked faithfully to the Lord. Even though they're just the ones cleaning the church, even though they're just the ones doing uh, uh, things that, are, uh, seem, that, that seem small, oh, he's just, he's just arranging the chairs, he's just uh, doing this in the music. But as long as you do it faithfully, God appreciates what you're doing. And God is going to reward your faithfulness and not the magnitude of what you have done. Okay, you might have won uh, thousands of people to the Lord. You did it faithfully. You have your reward. But you might have won just a few people to the Lord. But you did. You 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 di uh, have done God's calling faithfully. You have your reward as well. Okay, the Bible says in Matthew twenty five twenty one, uh, His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and what faithful servant. That is what is expected of us, to be faithful. Okay? And uh, 1 Corinthians 4, 4 verse 2, it says, Moreover, it required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Now, the Lord can give you much work. The Lord can give you less work compared in the eyes of people compared to other people. But the key is doing your work faithfully. Now, these people, some of them did their work in the places where they were assigned. And if you read the whole chapter, some of them just did some work in front of their houses, right? Uh, there's work to be done in front of my house. I did it together with my family. They did it faithfully. God acknowledged that. Some, uh, during this time when the walls uh, were burned and the walls uh, and everything was just in, in, in pieces, a lot of garbage around Jerusalem, that is the setting. Some people in front of their house, they just cleaned it away. They just, they just uh, cleared the, the, the garbage. They, they just cleared the stones that are uh, uh, lying around in the places. But God took, uh, took a notice of it and appreciated what they did. So whatever you do for the Lord, as long as you have the right motivation and as long as you do it faithfully, God is going to reward you. That is something that we can see in the mission fields today. Uh, missionaries who, did, who had hundreds of people saved, and, and all of these things with big buildings are much appreciated in conferences. But those missionaries who just did, like uh, the pastor of Pastor uh, Nunrata, right? He, pastor Nunrata shared us his testimony that maybe he's the only fruit, fruit that remained from that pastor, but see what Pastor Nunrata is doing now. And that is in the account of that pastor who faithfully taught him, preached the word of God here, even though there's not a lot of result, but he faithfully did what he is supposed to do. Amen. That's why as people of God, when we look at the, at, at the work of other people, let's not look at the magnitude. Let's not look at the, hey, this is a big church, great. This is a small church, uh, it's just uh, uh, it's normal to see a small church and all of these things. But what we have to do is look at the faithfulness of people. That's why if you look at the wall there, uh, we, we, we are supporting missionaries and their ministries vary in sizes. Right, some of them have uh, big ministries. Some of them don't. Uh, uh, there's even one that is not a missionary. But what we have to look at as we support missionaries is their faithfulness in doing their work. Are they faithful in their field? Even though there's just one salvation a year, two baptisms a year, even just few people that are that, that, that are being one to the Lord in their place, that is what God gave them. And as long as they're doing it faithfully, praise the Lord for them. Okay, that's why we see here that even though some of these people did jobs that are very simple, just clear rocks away in front of their houses, even the kids are doing it, God took mention of it and appreciated that. And we should have that kind of attitude as well. Don't look down at people who are doing, uh, 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 what do you call this, small things in church. And then look up at people who are standing behind the pulpit. All right, it's the same thing. They do it faithfully. We do it faithfully. They have the reward. In in in, in another in another uh, uh, example, if we don't preach the word faithfully, and people clean the church every day faithfully, they have more reward than us. Amen. 
right? It's not at the magnitude of what we're doing. It's not, it's not on, what, uh, on how we look. It's not on how good we preach. And it's not, in how, it's not how, uh, in, in uh, uh, the things that we say. It's about, are we, uh, especially for preachers, are we treating the, the Word of God faithfully? Are we preaching faithfully? Are we faithfully studying before we preach? That is where we get our reward, right? Because we can be great preachers. We can be preachers who are bombastic and preachers who can really touch your emotions. But if we are not faithful in what we're doing and God knows if we really prepared the message and God knows if we're really faithful in studying the Word of God, then that's when we have the, our, our reward as well. Same thing goes with the members. Now, going back here to our point that people are important to God. And we are going to realize as, you, as I studied Nehemiah, it's not really about the walls. Really. Now, even though we, we talk, uh, the, Nehemiah talks about the walls, how to rebuild it, the plan of rebuilding the wall, but in God's mind, ultimately, it's about the people. It's not about the walls. The, the temple is there, the walls can be built, but for God, what's important is the people that are going to be inside those walls. The reason why those walls are being put up in the first place is for their protection, it's for their safety. Now, God's, uh, God, in God's mind, the reason why these things are being done is for the people. And Nehemiah saw uh, the purpose of God. That's why he put everyone accountable in what they're doing. They, he assigned them. Now, if, even if you're not assigned in a gate, do something in front of your house. Now, all of these people saw that as well, and they uh, kept on working uh, for the Lord. Now, what, what another thing we can see here is that under the point of people are important to God, that it's also good to uh, acknowledge people every once in a while. People who did good for the Lord. Like, acknowledge them. Like, uh, during our outreach camp, we see people who are always here every day. People uh, uh, cooking, right? People who are preparing uh, the games and stuff. And, 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 and also those leaders who, who uh, made it possible for that to happen. It's good to acknowledge them as well. If we're not acknowledging them to lift them up, and, and for them to be puffed up, it's up to them if they're going to be puffed up or not. But we're acknowledging them also to be an encouragement to people. Right? Encouragement to those who will hear. Now, we see, we, we, if you see people are doing the work of God faithfully, you'll be encouraged to do it as well. You read this chapter, people are doing the work of God faithfully, whoever they are. There are leaders here, there are nobles here, there are people who are just, uh, uh, there are blacksmiths, there are those who are just making perfume. But all of them for, forgot about who they are, what they're doing, and did work for the Lord. Why? Because they see everyone else doing it. They see everyone else. That's why God made mention of them for, for, for it to be an encouragement as well. Kaya nga po, okay yung nagme-mention tayo. Uh, uh, great job. Uh, kahit na masama pakiramdam ni uh, Brother Deo. Prepared lahat ng games, di ba? Ang ganda. Now, bahala na siya kung magyayabang siya dahil sa ganon. But, if you remain humble despite of that, then that is, the, uh, that is a good attitude. But in the Bible, we don't only see mention of people who did great work for God. Because here in this chapter, we also see people, God mentioned, who did nothing at all. Here in verse number 5, it says, And next unto them that uh, Tekoit, I don't know how to read this, repaired, but their nobles put not their necks to the work of the Lord. Now, I'll, I'll talk more about this later, but what I want to point out here first is that God don't only mention people in a positive way, but the Bible name names in a negative way as well. Now, in our time, it's a taboo. You don't name names. Especially when you're preaching, don't name, name the name of a group who is teaching false doctrine. Don't name the name of a person a pastor is preaching false doctrine. It's a taboo. You cannot name names. For people, if you name names, you're a divisive pastor. You're, you're, you're a pastor with bad character. But the Bible is all about naming names. Because what, what's the point of warning if you don't tell them uh, uh, who it is, right? But of course, it is case-by-case uh, uh, case basis. There's general warning, but there are also specific warnings in the Bible. Here in Matthew chapter 16, verse 12, it says here, Matthew 16, 12, then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the living of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. God named names. Now he said that don't, be, um, don't beware of all these things, but beware of these Pharisees. And I believe that while God is saying these things, maybe some Pharisees are even listening in. Now, beware of these people. 
These people are teaching wrong doctrine. These people are teaching you what is not according to what really Moses gave you. They're adding to the law. They're adding the things that, that will make you work in your own flesh, to trust in your own righteousness. Now beware of them. Okay, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. 1 Timothy 1, 19 and 20. It says here, Holding faith and a good conscience, which some... Having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck, of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. So now the Bible named names. And 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 if, if you, today you're offended with pastors who name names, then maybe there's something wrong with you as well. Because it's it's uh parabang walang kwenta na nagbigay ka ng warning, hindi mo naman sinabi ko sino nagtuturo nun. And this and hindi rin naiwasan. Because the, the, the real reason why we read these things, people preach, is to warn people. And if you don't warn them specifically, you know, sometimes just saying, be careful out there is not enough. You have to tell them what to be careful of, who to be careful with, right? That, that's, that's what, uh, now, today we have uh, this principle uh, uh, that, that, uh, that should not be named among Christians. First is, never identify false groups or teachers by name. That is something that is instructed actually. Even in some seminaries, never identify false groups. Now, Paul did this and so did Christ. Now, we are told at least to be like Paul and to be like Christ. So if they did that, then we have to do that. 1 Corinthians 11.1 1 says, Be ye followers of me even as I, I also am followers of Christ. If Christ did that, Paul did that, preachers in the Bible did that, why shouldn't we? Right? To name the groups of people who are preaching uh, false doctrine. Second one is, uh, people are saying that if we identify them, them, it doesn't help anyone. Now, it sounds good, sounds nice, but it's not according to the Word of God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 16, verse 17 and 18, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine, uh, the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Verse 18 says, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by works, and uh, by good works and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. The reason why, in the first place, we're supposed to name these people is for, for us to be careful with them. Okay? For, for members who don't know them, or people who don't know them, to be careful with them, to not, not to fellowship with them. So if you don't name names, then that defeats the purpose of it. Right? It defeats the purpose. So if you don't really tell them who to be careful with, it defeats the purpose. Now, we have to mark them. Okay? Mark these people and avoid them. Now, just a side note as, uh, as, you, as we read 17 and 18 here, this is addressed to members, to brethren. Mark them, he says. Now, who are they going to mark? People who are preaching behind the pulpit. People who are teaching. That's why this, specifically verse 17 and 18, is given to members to be careful with the people who are preaching the Word of God, who are teaching. That's why today, uh, uh, napaka, uh, tawag dito, isa sa mga sinasabi sa mga members, wag mo nang questionin yung nagpipreach, sumunod ka na lang sa pastor, yan ang sinabi ng pastor, it is against the Word of God. The Bible says, be careful. Uh, uh, kung sino yung mga tumatayo, sino yung mga nagpipreach, tignan nyo kung tama, kung mali, ano sabi? Mark them. Ano pa? Avoid them. So kung sabihin, kung pastor yon, if you're to avoid them, you have to find another Church. That's why members, if contrary to what we, we have been taught, members, actually believers in the local church, are believers who should be competent and should make decisions for themselves spiritually. Right? For example, you, you, you're in a church, you're not being blessed anymore, you know that the pastor is preaching false doctrine, it is a mandate of God to you to go and find another church where you will be blessed. Okay, this is something because you're expected to be competent. Now, this is not written only to members of the church or brethren, but written to competent members. Because you can never mark anyone who's preaching false doctrine if you don't know that they're preaching false doctrine. Now, that means if you're not a competent member, if you're a member who's unskillful in handling the Word of God, then in that, in that instance, you're already sinning. And after that, you cannot apply this, a lot of verses in the Bible and cannot be careful about false teachers. Now, uh, going back to our lesson, now, uh, uh, it says that but the world says never identify them and identifying them doesn't help and saying that preachers who name names are being proud and divisive. Okay, this is something that is really planted in our minds. Na pagka mayroong mga pastor na nagbabanggit ng pangalan, mayabang yan, nagkakos pa yan ng division. 
And the verse that we just read a while ago, who's causing division? The preachers, the teachers who's teaching wrong doctrine. That is the truth. Now, in our mind, those people who warns are the ones causing division. When the Bible says those people who are teaching false doctrine are the ones causing division. Even though it seems that people are united in the in the false doctrine and those who are warning are just a minority, it's still them who cause the division. Okay? That's the, the, the Bible is very clear about that. So let's not fall into that thinking, worldly thinking, not naming names. Now, it has to be, again, case-by-case case basis. Now, if you want to give a general warning and it's not, uh, it's not really helpful to, to be specific about it, then go ahead. But uh, when it comes to false teaching, we have to be specific about that. Tell people who to avoid. So that people who goes back to the Philippines, hindi na sila mag-aaten. Alang alam mo, ingatan yon sa Pilipinas. May pastor don na nagtuturo ng ganito. Ha? Wag yung wag kayong aaten don. Hindi mo naman sinabi kung saan. Hindi mo naman sinabi kung sino. E maatenan, naniwala. E this balewala yung warning. Diba? So dapat, we have to name them. Then we're not naming people because we hate them. We're not naming people because we have something personal about them. We're simply naming them because they thought something that is wrong. It's simple as that. And if they're humble enough to accept that, then there's then all is well, right? Then uh, we, we can still uh, remain to be friends uh, and, ha and have fellowship in the Word of God. Now, getting back to our point again, people are important to God. We have to realize that. As we do work for the Lord, as we minister, we should not be sidetracked in, building, in the building of the wall, but always be focused on the people that God placed in our hands. Right? Not be sidetracked with that. Now, now, we can have good buildings, great. We can have uh, beautiful uh, auditoriums, great. But let's not focus on that. Let's not focus on the rebuilding. Or even though all these things can help worship, all of these things can help the cause of God. But what's important is the people who are, we are ministering to. Kaya po wag po natin silang kalimutan. Wag po tayong mas sidetrack sa mga ganung bagay. Minister to the people. Make sure that they're uh, they're being taught the word of God. Make sure that they're being taken care of spiritually. Why? Because these walls can will be taken care of if the people know what they have to do. Now looking back at this chapter, everyone is doing something. Why? Because they have been taught and and, and Nehemiah told them that we have to do this. Remember in chapter 2, God is God's hand is in this work. God uh, anointed this work. We have to do this. People understood and they did it. Right? Wala nang sapilitan. Hindi na, hindi na pinilit ni Nehemiah. Pag hindi nyo yan ginawa, hindi kayo mga ligtas. Hindi na niya ginawa. Sinabi na lang niya because they understood. If people has a biblical understanding, if people have this, uh, this understanding of the word of God and they know how important it is, they will know what to do inside the church. You don't have to, uh, hindi mo na sila kailangan lokohin pa. Hindi mo na sila kailangan pilitin pa. Alam na nilang gagawin nila. Now, the reason why, uh, minsan kailangan pang pilitin, kailangan pang bugbugin, kasi hindi, na, hindi pa naturuan kung anong dapat talagang gawin. Now, I believe if a person who is saved, really, really saved, and you preach to them, and they know what they have to do, they're gonna do it. You don't have to force them. People who are really saved, they're gonna give. People who, really, uh, who are really saved and know and have been taught well in the Word of God are going to work in the ministry. People who have been taught well by the Word of God are going to sacrifice for God. You don't have to coerce them into doing it. You don't have to force them into doing it just like these people. Now focus on the people. Don't get sidetracked in the building. What's, what's important is the people. In the first place, the meaning of the church itself is the people, not the walls that are around us. Right? We can be we can be worshiping God in a park somewhere and we can still do it. Right? Or we can worship God in a beautiful building and we can still do it. If God blesses us with a beautiful building, great. But that is not the focus. Okay? It, not even programs. That is not the focus. It's the people. And even as we go to the outreaches, don't focus on anything else but the people who are ministering to. And it's a great thing. As we do that, God will slowly give us the result. Okay? Now, first thing, again, first point here is People are important to God. People. And people should be important to us as well. Second point, we see here in this chapter that this building of the wall was a united effort. Mm -hmm. Everyone did what they have to do. Well, of course, not everyone, but most of the people did what they have to do. And if we are to achieve anything for the Lord at all, we have to do it in unity. We have to be united into doing it. If, if we are not going to, to do that, wala tayong maabot. 
Wala tayong magagawa. Psalms 133 verse 1 said, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And I believe I've preached in this chapter and we see that unity gives us a lot of blessings as well. Hindi lang blessings sa dahil marami tayong magagawa, kung hindi blessing na magkakaroon tayo ng lakas, gawin ang ating ginagawa. When you see your, your brethren doing the same thing as you're doing, lalo kang mag encourage gawin yan. Pero kung nag-iisa ka lang, madali ka na lang ma, ma, masab, masabi sa'yo ng Diablo, nag-iisa ka lang, tigilan mo na, mahipapagod ka lang. Pero, but, pero kung nakita mo lahat gumagawa, it's easy for you to continue to be encouraged and keep on doing the work of God. Now, we see that in this chapter that people were working. Verse 12, it says here, And next unto him repaired Shalom, the son of Halosh, Halohesh. Hindi pwedeng kapampangan na pangalan to. Halohesh. The ruler of the half part of Jerusalem, he and who? His daughters. Now, even this ruler is doing something even his daughters are doing construction work. That's why Cambodians are scriptural because even uh, women are doing construction work. Like in the Philippines, it's very rare to see uh, women doing construction. But here in Cambodia, the, one of the first wonders we see here was, were, uh, were women carrying buckets of cement and all these things. They're doing that. Now here, same thing. The children, the kids, the, even the women are doing something. Okay? It was a united effort. Everyone who saw that there's something to be done, they did it. Dapat po ganon. They have this, uh, ano ba sa English yun? Uh, initiative to do something. And that is one good uh, attitude that we, we can have in the church. To have initiative. Hindi na kailangan pang manduhan. Hindi na kailangan pang utusan. We just have to do what we, uh, as we see uh, uh, what is needed in the, in the ministry. Now, what we can see here as well is that families are doing work. Who families? Now, a strong church is com are composed of strong families in the Lord. If families in churches are broken, if families in churches are uh, not strong in the Lord, the church can never be strong. Why? Because it's easy to discourage a, 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 a single member of the family if the rest of his family is not working faithfully to the Lord. Okay, sabihin na natin, okay, given that every, uh, every member of the family is in the church, and doing, but if the commitment level in that family is not in the same level as well, it's not going to work also. That's why as, as fathers, as leaders in the family, we have to make sure that we have the same commitment level to the Lord. Why? Because kung tatay lang ang merong ganong klaseng commitment sa Panginoon, hindi rin niya magagawa ang kanyang dapat gawin. Kung nanay lang, hindi rin. Kung mga anak lang, hindi rin. Dapat pare-parehas po yung commitment. And it's the job of fathers to lead their family to that level of commitment to the Lord. And as we, as we build uh, strong families in the Lord, as we build families who are really committed to the Lord, we can do much like building a wall, building, the, building this wall. We can do much. Now, we have to uh, have put a, a conscious effort to have a strong family. Conscious effort. Kung ikaw, nakita mo, pinakita sa'yo ng Panginoon na sa iyong pamilya, meron kang kailangan gawin para ma-encourage mo ang kasama mo sa pamilya na patuloy pa maging faithful sa Panginoon, magbigay pa ng commitment sa Panginoon, then by all means, do something about it. Prioritize that. Now, as we have, I know we have other ministries, especially to preachers, we have ministries, outreaches, and all of these things, but we, we must not forget that our first ministry are our families. Right? Because if we can have great outreaches, we can have great churches, but if our families are broken, then the devil can easily just remove us from the ministry. Now focus on that. Now, now, now we see here that the, this noble, this ruler, and his daughters were doing work. And all of the members of the family were doing work. Again, they were working in front of their houses. Okay, um, okay. We'll, we'll go a little bit quicker. Uh, third point here. My third point here is our titles should not hinder us from Christ's work. Okay, verse number five, going back there. And next unto them, the Tekoites repaired, but their nobles put not their necks to the work of the Lord. There's always going to be people who think too much of themselves that they are above the work of the Lord. Right? There are these people. Para bang, ayan lang ang gagawin. Graduate na ako dyan, di ko na kailangan gawin yan. Dipo ba? Ah, uh, tawag dito sa sa as I was studying in the Philippines, pagdating ng soul winning every kailan mas soul winning namin? Thursday. Thursday. Uh, we have soul winning every Thursday. We go out and and share the gospel two hours something like that. You will not see pastors going with us. Not a single pastor even though nandun sila, okay? They were there. They just they just finished teaching our classes and all of these things. Pero pagdating na ng soul winning, 
Iba na gagawin nila, makakapi na. Right? Oh, oh, and I don't know, they have their reasons. And, and uh, if they have good reasons, then okay. But what I, what I see is that our title should not hinder us from doing the work of God. All right? Even if you're a pastor already, you're not graduated or a preacher already, hindi ka pa graduate sa soul winning. Hindi pa graduate sa mga uh, mediocre works sa loob ng simbahan. If you can help, help. Right? Even though, you, even though pastors and preachers, their main ministry is to really study the Word of God, to be able to preach uh, 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 good messages in order to feed, feed the people, but there's still work to be done and they still have to help. Now, the Bible says here that even the nobles were doing it. The rulers were doing it. People who, who people are looking up to started with Nehemiah doing the work of the Lord. And if you're really an effect, to be an effective leader, effective preacher, leader of the church, you have to lead by example. Yeah. Hindi lang utos-utos, right? Have to lead by example. Now, if Nehemiah, kung nag-utos na siya, nag-utos, hindi sa kanya nakita na siya rin ay gumagawa, hindi naman siguro gagawa ang mga to. At kung hindi nila nakita yung mga sarili nilang leader sa kanilang mga lugar, lalo silang hindi gagawa. Right? But there are people, like here in verse 5, who think that they're above the work. Because they're nobles. Or not, not, not such a noble attitude they have, but they're nobles, right? And they're rulers. They're people who are respected in their community, but they think they're too good for that work. They don't want to get their hands dirty. They don't want to build the wall. But they want to be there when the walls are built. But they want to benefit after the walls are built. Now, now, uh, if we, um, because it's, now, if we value our place in community, if we va- value our achievements more than the work of the Lord, lalo talaga tayo hindi gagawa. Na nakaka-bless po yung mga churches. If you have been to many churches in the Philippines, there are people who are doctors, architects, all these things. Pero pagdating sa simbahan, hindi mo man lang malalaman na doctor sila, architect sila. Why? Because they're doing what everyone else is doing. Right? Pagdating sa simbahan, may mga estudyante, may mga successful people, business people na mayayaman, pero they're doing the same thing. Pag may conference, sila pa yung nag-serve. Why? Because they don't think na they're, too much, they're better than the work of the Lord. Kaya nga, pag may mga churches na ganun, nagsisimula din yan sa leadership. Kunyari, yung pastor, doktor yan, bigyan mo yung specialty. Sa harap dapat yan. Uh, architect yan, sa harap dapat yan. Kahit na magkasala yan, hayaan nyo, pambira, sayang ang tights niyan. Diba? May mga ganun. Now, if, if you're a respecter of person, your members are going to be like that as well. Magkakaroon ng mga members na, ah, ganito lang kami. Ay, ganyan yung mga yan. Diba? I have been to churches who, who are like this. Na, uh, pag ang Bible student, nakabuntis, ang member na giver, nakabuntis, ito ikakasal, ito itataboy. Why? Pere. May pera dito. They, they, they're a respecter of people. And, and, and in the New Testament, binanggit yan. Di ba? Bakit nyo hinahayaan na nasa harap yung mga importante tapos hayaan nyo na lang umpo na lang sa likod o sa sahig na lang yung mga hindi naman importante. When in the eyes of the Lord, these people are the same. Now, even though David slayed Goliath, even though Solomon did a lot of things for the Lord, even though Paul did a lot of work for the Lord, but all of them did it faithfully in the eyes of the Lord, all of them are faithful servants that should be rewarded. Kaya nga po sa atin, hindi rin po tayo dapat tumingin sa tao. Sa title ng tao. ba Maganda tindig, respetuhin mo yan. Pangit ang tindig, bayaan mo na lang yan. Hindi po ganyan. So, we have to be uh, like that. We have to be submitted to each other in church. We have to be respectful of each other in church. First Peter 5, verse 5 and 6 says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you, be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time. Bakit itong mga to, hindi sila gumawa? Itong mga nobles ito. Why? Because they don't have that humility. It's not, about, it's not about really what they're doing, but it's about their lack of submission to the Lord. Okay, hindi yun yung problema doon. Kaya may mga tao sa simbahan na hindi kumikilos, hindi gumagawa. Why? Because they lack submission to the Lord. They lack submission to the Word of God. They, they value their opinion. They value themselves. They value their standing in community more than the Word of God. Why? Because you can never see in the Word of God anything na nakailangan iba-iba ang trato sa mga members ng simbahan. No. Why? Bakit nila gusto ng tra- ibang trato sa sarili nila? Because they're not submitted to the Word of God. They're not humble enough. Luke 22 verse 42 uh, says, Saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will but thine be done. Even Christ himself knows how to submit to God the Father. 
He knows that. He knows that obedience is the key inside uh, whenever we're doing the will of God. That's why all of us have to be that, submitted to the work of the Lord, doing it. Now, Christ is the best example. He's God Himself in the flesh, but He knows that He has to be humble to, 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 be, to submit to the, uh, to the work of the Lord, to submit to what God is calling them to do. That's why each and every one of us, God is calling us to do something, be submitted to that. Kung hindi ka mag-submit dyan, then there's one part of the ministry that will not be done well. Kaya dapat po tayo lahat. Now, what's worse here in chapter 3 is that, uh, pag, dito, this is actually for the next message, but just to make a reference, in chapter 4, the reason why they were able to do all these things, work and all these things, work, work, and work, is in verse chapter 4, it says that they had the mind to work. Now, now, these people, not all of them had the mind to work. Now, if we all have that mind to work, right, that means it doesn't matter what work you have to do. You just have to work, okay? It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what we're doing. Now, as children of God, God expects us, expects us to do something for Him. Now, what that is, we have to do that faithfully. And uh, as, as a last point before we end, let's just no notice some of the char uh, characteristics of the leadership of Nehemiah. Some of these characteristics here. It says here, he made each man accountable, and this man made sure, uh, and this made sure that the work was done will be done right. Now Nehemiah placed people near gates, near uh, uh, certain places, and Nehemiah, Nehemiah knew each one of them. He knows the name of the people who are who are really uh, uh, stationed there, so that they will be accountable to what they're doing. Now this is a good char uh, characteristic of a leader to make to delegate first delegate responsibilities and make people responsible for doing that now it having said that even if we have that kind of leader if the members don't have that sense of accountability and responsibility it's never going to work now we have to realize that what we are doing to the Lord whatever it is we're accountable to God personally individually he, we cannot point to our pastor if we didn't do something unfaithfully to the Lord. We cannot point to anyone. It is something that is given to us, our assignment. God is going to, uh, we're going to give account to God because of that. So now, one good thing about Nehemiah was he was able to delegate that and was able to give people a sense of responsibility in what they're doing. All right? Uh, next one is, again, we have talked about this, but he noted those who did the work and also those who didn't. He took note of that. And make sure that these people will be acknowledged and the other people will be uh, named as well. Okay? Another thing is that one of, his, one, of the, one of the proof of his great leadership here, and we have talked about this, I just want to appreciate what Nehemiah has, was, was able to do, was he was able to uh, get both rulers and uh, those, those who are at the bottom of the society to work together as one. Now, that is one characteristic of a good leader. Again, nabanggit ko na kanina, pag ang leader mismo ang nagbibigay ng masyadong special treatment sa ibang tao at less treatment sa ibang tao, magiging ganong klaseng simbahan tayo. Pero pag ang leader marunong na hindi mag-respect ng estado ng tao kung hindi uh, i-treat ang bawat isa ng pantay-pantay, then people will have that mind to work and work together in unity. Hindi rin sila magkakaroon ng ganong klaseng thinking. That's why it's important as well. Even though God is the one moving in the hearts of these people, but it's not a secret that God used Nehemiah for this. And God gave wisdom to Nehemiah. And Nehemiah was wise enough to let the people know that it doesn't matter who you are, you have to do work. Okay? Now, another thing here, last thing actually, is Nehemiah didn't disqualify people for their past sins and failures. Because some people here have done bad things before, but all of them were given the chance to work for the Lord. That is what characteristic of a great leader. Now, I, I, another example I make now, this might be, hindi na lang magsabi ng pangalan, pero obvious naman. Uh, I was studying in the Philippines. Alam naman natin na si Pastor JS nagkaroon ng scandal. Okay, sabi natin scandal. Parang showbiz lang. At the same time, dun sa grupo ng mga pastor kung nasaan ako, meron ding pastor na had the same thing. Exactly the same thing. Same problem. What happened was this pastor is a, mem is a pastor of a church of 20 members. But this pastor is a pastor of a big church in Pasay. What happened was this pastor remained in fellowship. Kahit na hindi man siya part ng core na yon, hindi man siya sent out or whatever, he remained in fellowship, allowed to preach and all these things. 
this pastor, even though sent out siya right from that church, binaliwala, tinaboy sa fellowship, and then I don't know what he's doing now in the work of the Lord. Now, this is exactly what, what, what happens now. Because of their respect for people and, and, and their importance, na importance yung binibigyan nila sa tao, even the past failures and sins, hahayaan nila na maghinder yung mga yan para mag-serve sa, sa, ang mga tao sa ministry. Now, let's look at Ezra chapter 10. Verse 31 and then 44. Because this is 31 to 43, this is a list of people who did bad in the sight of the Lord. Now, it says here, And, and the sons of Harim, Eliezer, Ishijah, Malkiah, Shemaiah, Shimeon. Okay, some of these people are here in Nehemiah chapter 3. What did they do? All of them had taken strange wives. Okay? Hindi yung weird, hindi sabihin na weirdo na asawa. Sabihin, hindi kasama, hindi hujo. Okay, unbelievers sa panahon natin, nag-asawa ng unbelievers. And some of them had wives by whom they had children. Now, may anak sila sa mga uh, tao na hindi sa Israel. And we know, God, do not, God does not like that. Ayaw niya. Sa, sabi niya sa mga Israelites, hindi kayo kukuha na magpangasawa, magpangasawa sa ibang uh, lugar. Dapat dyan lang sa Israel. But these people, they did that. But going to Nehemiah chapter 3, these people are people who did great work in the eyes of the Lord as well. Why? Because Nehemiah did not disqualify them because of their past sins. Now, everyone here has past sins. Everyone here has a dark past that may seem na hindi na pwede ito gamitin ng Panginoon. But it's not the job of the leader to say who's qualified to do work for the Lord and who's not. It's not a job. It's the job of the leader to give chance to those uh, people to do the work for the Lord and it will just manifest as time goes on kung talagang hindi sila karapat dapat sa work na yun. Right? I'm not talking about pastorate ministry. I'm talking about members who are doing for the Lord. Sabihin, ah, nagsinungaling dati ha, wag na isama sa outreach. No. Hindi siya ganyan. Okay, you did something, you're humble enough to ask forgiveness, work for the Lord. Now the Bible says, a just man falleth seven times but riseth up again. Hindi po tayo exempted sa pagkakamali. Hindi po tayo exempted sa pagkakasala. Pero kung meron tayong leader na masyadong legalista, nagkamali ka, hindi ka na pwede uli kumanta sa choir, then that is not what the Lord wants. God wants to give chances to everyone to work for the Lord, to work for the ministry. It doesn't matter what kind of sins you did. Peter denied the Lord, but God used him again mightily for the ministry. Paul did a lot of things, but God used him mightily in the ministry. That's why Nehemiah didn't disqualify even these people who Ezra mentioned na gumawa na masama sa, sa Panginoon. Nehemiah allowed them to do work. Now, all of these people, again, even after the wall was built, meron pa dito sa mga gumawa na, na trumabaho sa wall na gumawa ng, ng, ng kamalian sa harap ng Panginoon. Even during the wall was being built, some of these people, mapag-aaralan natin, sila yung may mga na-discourage Diniscourage pa nila yung iba At sinabi nila, hindi natin ito matatapos But again, Nehemiah, instead of pushing them away Nehemiah, What Nehemiah did was encourage them and, and keep doing, keep doing it for the Lord And encourage them to be strong in doing it for the Lord So, as I end uh, here It's already almost 10 Again, I would just like to uh, summarize this in, in, Here, chapter 3 As we look at this chapter Even though it's kind of uh, nakakatamad basahin Okay, we should as we read this, we realize that God gives importance to people who are doing faithfully. God gives importance to people uh, in the ministry. And in the, same, in the same token, we have to have this kind of attitude as well. Wag po tayo mag-sidetrack sa pag-build ng wall, focus on the people. Wag po tayo mag-sidetrack sa iba ginagawa nila, magagandang gawain, focus on doing your work faithfully to the Lord. And God will bless, God will reward those who, are, who have been faithful to Him. Let us uh, pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You for uh, our short, uh, short uh, Sunday school. I pray.